Hello and welcome to the program. I am DJ Badimasi. Insecurity is the biggest challenge Nigeria is facing today. It has become some sort of monster tormenting almost every part of the country. And the best efforts of security agents appear insufficient to tame it. The past two weeks have been among the deadliest in the country in recent time, with over 200 Nigerians killed in different attacks across the country. Traveling around Nigeria these days has become a very risky venture. People are scared of either being kidnapped for ransom or falling prey to the bullets of what is now commonly known as unknown gunmen who operate under different criminal groups. Schools are also not safe and religious institutions are not exempt. And of course, we're also beginning to see that even IDP camps are not a sanctuary as well. Even police headquarters and stations as well are not safe at all. Security agents that we all rely on for security are increasingly coming under attack and getting killed. So how can Nigeria deal with this myriad of security challenges? Well, the National Assembly says the president should declare a state of emergency on security, but some people like the governor of Katsina State, Aminu Masarai, is of the opinion that as long as the military remains overstretched, a state of emergency will not make any difference at all. Let's take a listen to the governor now speaking on that issue recently. State of emergency is all a problem. You see, you have a situation where the military are in all the states of the Federation. Then you ask yourself, how many do we have? Are we not overstretching them? So the reality is the responsibility of securing this country is ours, all of us. We have a role to play. And we must play it for the sake of the country, and for the sake of our children and grandchildren. Not for the sake of the persons that are in office. I think the, the, we have to understand that whatever we do to restore security today, we are not doing it for one particular person or group of persons, but we are doing it for all of us, for the country, and in fact for Africa. A stable Nigeria means a stable Sub-Saharan Africa. So I think we better be serious about this issue of security. About if you say, okay, state of emergency, too, what, what do you do? We are having the same people, the same uh, security agencies, the same capacities, and the same resources. So what are we talking about? We have a problem that everybody has a role to play. We better play. Politics should be over. The security situation of the country is beyond partisan politics. It's a national concern for all of us, every responsible person. Now, some other persons have also asked the government to seek foreign assistance in tackling the insecurity in the country. Now, amid all the security issues Nigeria is battling with at the moment, it is important to examine the strength of our armed forces, which are saddled with the responsibility of securing the nation. Perhaps that will give us an idea of what we need to do to overcome the current security challenge. Now, Global Firepower, an organization which ranks uh, countries now in the world based on their military forces, has released its uh, Global Power Index for 2021. Of the 140 countries considered in the 2021 report, Nigeria is ranked 35 in the world. That's 35 strongest. Nigeria has the 35th strongest military in the world and is ranked fourth in Africa with an estimated strength of just 200 soldiers. So let's take a look at this slide. I mean, that will give us a better idea of what we are, are looking at. Now, I want you to look at this. Bear this in mind. It gives you the total, the land size of Nigeria. That's almost 1 million square kilometers. So precisely 927,768 square kilometers. Now, that is the land size of Nigeria, and I must tell you, that is quite huge. Now, let's look at some of the troubled states in this country. Niger State, of course, there's a problem there. You have bandits operating there, and recently the governor said Boko Haram has actually established a base in that state. Look at the size of that state, 76,363 square kilometers. And Zamfara State, of course, we know has always been troubled. The land size, 39,762 square kilometers. Kaduna State also, another troubled state, 46,053 square kilometers. And then Benue State, 
34,059 square kilometers. I want you to bear that in mind. The total land size of Nigeria, 923,768 square kilometers. Now, what's our total defense budget for this year? What we've actually budgeted for defense, and when we talk about defense, we're talking about the military. So you have the Army, the Air Force, and of course the Navy. So total budget for defense is just around $2.3 billion. Now let's take a look at uh, the statistics now from global firepower. There you have it. Uh, now, this talks about Nigeria's, uh, yes, our manpower. Because manpower is very key. So, for instance, how many soldiers do we actually have in this country? I mean, the number of soldiers you have, of course, will go a long way in determining how effective the military would respond to the kind of challenge we have now. We've often heard soldiers complain that uh, they've been in the Northeast for ages. There have been no rotation at all. Why, why is that so? Now, let's take a look at this. Our total population, according to Global Firepower now, uh, 214 million. Now, the number of available manpower, available manpower, those who are available and can actually join the military is 77 million. Those who are actually fit for service now is 43,148,106. That's it. That's 20.2% of the population. Now, those who are reaching military age annually, that is, those who are reaching the age of 18 and are qualified to join the military is 1.6% of the population and annually 3,451,848 persons are reaching military age annually. But then, let's look at the total military, the total military personnel we have in this country. 200,000. 200,000 military personnel in this country. Of course, they are supposed to provide security for that land size of close to 1 million square kilometers and provide security for about 214 million people. Uh, 214 million people. So, now... Active personnel, those who are active. So even though we have 200,000 military personnel, those who are active, as in, I, I, I want to suppose that would be those who are fit for combat now, 120,000. Don't forget, this is the total military personnel. Making We have the Army, the Navy, and the Air Force. So do we have a reserve? No, we don't have a reserve at all. Paramilitary, where you have, uh, say, NCDC and the others, is uh, 80,000. So no reserve at all. No reserve. Now I want you to just keep those figures now in mind and uh, let's go on now and look at, uh, yes, our land forces. The land forces, what are the equipment, uh, uh, what are the equipment available to them? So we have, uh, Nigeria has 355 uh, tanks. Armored, armored vehicles now is 2,000. Self-propelled artillery 65, uh, towed artillery is 339, and uh, then you have rocket projectors uh, 59. So that's, that's just what we have. But let's, uh, I want us to compare what we have now to Egypt. Egypt is, uh, Egypt has the, 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 Egypt is the top, it has the top military in, in Africa. So let's compare ourselves to Egypt. Let's look at uh, their figures now. Uh, now, uh, the total population of Egypt is uh, 104,124,440. So it's just about uh, half the size of Nigeria's population. The available manpower they have, available manpower, whereas Nigeria had 77,000, I mean 77 million now. Egypt has 44, uh, 42 million. And those who are fit for service, 35 million, do not forget, in the case of Nigeria, I think it's around 45 million or so. Those who are reaching military age annually is 1.5% uh, of the population. That's 1.54 uh, million. But look at the total uh, military personnel of Egypt, 1,330,000. So 1.3 million. That's the total uh, military personnel that Egypt has. Total military personnel. 1.3 million. Nigeria has 200. And the active personnel, 450,000. Nigeria has 120. They have a reserve of 480,000. Nigeria has no reserve at all. 
and they have a para paramilitary strength of 400,000. Nigeria has just around 80,000. And what's the budget now? What's the 2021 budget for Egypt military this year? The defense budget is $10 billion. Nigeria's budget is $2.3 uh, billion. So you look at all the assets that Egypt has. I mean, it gives you a clear idea of um, what we're actually facing and uh, the challenge before us. So it's, it's, it's a very disturbing development, but uh, let me bring in Sheia Detaya here, who is a, a security consultant and a, a former DSS official. He, he joins us in the studio here. Uh, Sheia, you've seen those uh, statistics, you've seen the figures. If I can just go back to them now, uh, what, what do you make of them? Well, it's an interesting statistics, um, mm -hmm. one that should make us to be concerned as a nation. Um, there's uh, something striking in that statistics. You, you, you know, you're able to show and you know, compare the population, um, the last um, size of Nigeria, almost roughly about um, uh, one million, yes, about one million, uh, one million kilometer. square kilometer, compared with um, put side by side with. Um, active military strength of about 120,000. So we're talking about a soldier to about 80 kilometers. So if we have to spread our military strength across the whole country, it means that we're talking about a soldier to fight and take care of about 80 kilometers. And I'm making this comparison because we're having trouble all around the country. All around the country, As yes. we speak now, we have our military stretch um, you know, when, when, when this issue of Operation Crocodile Smile and Python Dance and the rest started, and I was saying it that the military are involved in too many issues. And when military are involved, it reduces the capacity of the Nigerian police to be able to take care of some of, of, some of our internal crises. But Remember, we didn't talk about the Nigerian police. And let me just yeah. quickly say this, that we have just roughly around... 300, between 300 and 350,000 policemen in the country. And uh, a sizable number of that uh, of the policemen you have in this country uh, actually work for VIPs. Yeah, and, and, and that was because there was conscious efforts uh, during the days of Olusha Gwambasanjo to try to meet up with the United Nations requirement of um, uh, uh, one police officer to 250 uh, people, I think. I think that is a recommendation of the of the UN on, on this. And so there was a conscious effort to be able to bring uh, pol uh, police uh, strength from about 80,000 yet about at that time to about 300 something thousand. And we've not seen the same in terms of trying to build strength uh, with our military. Uh, military. And if you compare, look at Egypt and um, and Nigeria. Yeah, you may want to say uh, that, um, yes, Egypt had been at war for a long time, but the war are external war, not internal aggression. Internal, yes. And then um, over the years, they knew that um, they could find themselves in a situa situation where they have to fight against Israel or other aggressors. So they'll be building the military over the years. Mm. And our own, maybe because of our uh, foreign policy objective, uh, which is centered on uh, trying to make peace with our neighboring uh, country, uh, they are about, and the, the, the whole idea around the philosophy is that if we are not at war with Niger, Chad Republic, Cameroon, or Benin Republic, uh, we will not, we will be able to transfer or divert the money we will be spending on, you know, military or war, persecuting war into development. And that is the reason why... But unfortunately, we didn't see, we, we, we haven't seen that. I exactly, mean, but, but the, pro the, the issue is this. Now, we've had about 10, 15 years now that we've seen this problem developing. And that is enough for us to start thinking of exactly. how we should be building this over the years. That is something I'll be saying, and I'm going to repeat it today. If Nigeria, you know, um, break into civil war right now, the Nigerian government, as it is today, will begin mass um, recruitment, recruitment of soldiers. Mm. They will conscript if necessary just the same way it happened in uh but, during but the don't civil you war. think that is what so we probably should, should be we doing have now? to wait till when war break out before we begin to recruit so that means that we'll be recruiting this time around for us we'll be recruiting nigerians to be fighting nigerians that are ordinarily supposed not to be enemy when we can prevent us fighting ourselves and recruits have enough manpower to fight the enemy of the state. Because at that point, the, the definition of the enemy of the state will change when we know we break into civil war. Mm. It will not be the ordinary people 
that are not satisfied with the way Nigeria is being governed or are not satisfied with uh, what they are getting from one section of the country would not start seeing themselves as enemy and start killing themselves. So and that is so, sorry to interject now. Could, could we then say that, look, from, from what we have seen, from, from all of these statistics, it's glaring that uh, the reason why the country is currently struggling to contain the Boko Haram insurgency, deal with uh, the IPOB uh, group now in the southeast and deal with banditry you have across the country is essentially because we do not have the manpower to deal with this problem. Exactly. You know, the last time we spoke, I, 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 I emphasized the same thing. You see, um, as long as you continue to do the same thing and you want to get, you know, a different answer, um, I, 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 don't let me complete uh, I mean, that statement. I think we've been wasting too much money. We don't need to have to cano aircrafts for us to win this war. Trained soldiers with AK-47 is enough. All the armaments that the Boko Haram are using today are the ones that they took from the Nigerian army. So it means that whatever Boko Haram is using uh, to to launch attack against Nigerian armed forces are things that Nigerian armed forces already has in their kitty. So what we need uh, is for us to have enough manpower. And, and I, I've given example on how we can go about it and be able to save, you know, ourselves long-term burden. We've been running a program that we call Short Service Combatant for Officers, mm, yes. where, where, where they work for a certain mm. number of years and then they disengage them. We can have short service enlistment for soldiers, soldiers, for a period not more than five years. Let these people start going on. I know on six month training, I know there's going to be issue of, okay, do you have enough training facility to be able to turn over, you know, that quite large number of personnel within a short period? The answer is, yes, we don't have it within this country, but there's nothing stopping us from asking up from those we've been providing assistance to. Nigeria have been training and, uh, security forces in Liberia Syria alone. We've been providing support for Gambia, for several other countries that were even the one at the point in time protecting them. The DSS have been training, you know, security uh, intelligence officers and protective officers for so many of these countries. What stops us from, you know, reaching out to our West African brothers and say, you know what, for a period where Nigeria is uh, having an internal and we need to train manpower, what we need is your facility and your equipment. We send our people and they assist us. In, see, the main aspect of the training, which has to be do with the indoctrination, they can come back and do a crash program of two weeks, you know, when they are finishing mm. in those countries. They can go there, do the major aspect of the country, which has to do with the technicalities of war, the warfare and the tradecraft. They go there and learn, and they will bring them in. Because these people are not meant to be in the Nigerian Armed Forces for a very long time. long time. They are to be recruited for a particular purpose. I can assure you, if we can double that number that we have if, right if there. you ask me i think we'll we should begin even triple it. we'll begin to have strong uh, traction and if we can triple it we can win this way in two years and I, not something i've said also of recent is that this is not the time that we need to start accelerating building railways lines everywhere at the end of the day if we break into war those railway lines will be used to carry their bodies not human living human beings so why waste money right now when, when we need the money more to prevent us from breaking into war? Find ourselves in a situation where Nigeria will start looking like the way Syria is looking. If you've seen pictures of Syria of, uh, of recent, then you'll know that this is how it come of where a nation decides to go into war. All this infrastructure they are trying to build today will be blown off by ourselves. So why don't we just reserve those money and you know what? We're committing, it's going to be 50% or more of our budget at this particular point in time to stop this war. If we're able to stop this war, our growth in the next five years will be more than what we've achieved in the last 25 years. Let me just pause you there. We'll take a short break and we'll come back and uh, we'll try to wrap up this discussion. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back. Opinions are free. Facts are sacred. The truth is universal. How in practical terms can we, for instance, de-escalate the tension? The president must see himself as the president of the Federal Republic. We know where the enemy is. Three places. Um, the Lake Chad basin, the border area between Nigeria and Cameroon, and then the Sambisa forest. On Digi360, 
we give you a complete dose of everything. Opinion, facts and undiluted truths. I hardly believe what politicians are saying in this uh, part of the world. The new Nigeria is possible, the future is possible. We delve into the issues, dissect it so that you can understand it, use it to take action. I don't think there's any need for any governor to look for grant for ranching. Digi360, dissecting the issues. All right, welcome back. And if you've just joined us, we're looking at the security situation in the country today and how it can be resolved. And I have uh, Sheyi Adetayo with me in the studio. Sheyi, um, look, the members of the National Assembly are calling on the president to declare a state of emergency. If you ask me if there's any emergency at all that needs to be declared in this country today, that emergency would be to increase the recruitment in the Nigerian police force, uh, not just the Nigerian military now, even the Nigerian police force, exactly. because we know that even the Nigerian police force too is highly on demand. I mean, what have you got to say to that? Yeah, um, I think, um, see, the National Assembly really needs to sit down and have a better understanding of what we're dealing with. A situation where we're given you no know, solutions bits and, in bits and pieces will not solve. A state of emergency alone, and I agree with Governor Masari on this, you declare a state of emergency with the same manpower, with the same resources that is mm. fighting Python dance, Crocodile Smile, uh, to, uh, Operation to, uh, Tukura, Operation Wellstroke, everywhere. The results, it will not achieve anything. anything. What, what state of emergency will do for us is, you see, we'll be having conflicting policies. I, I honestly don't even understand when people say state of yeah, emergency. I, I can, I, yeah, it's important. I, I it's important for it. us to be able to achieve this. You see, it's just about we'll be having uh, conflicting policies in how we address this. You know, you see local government chairman providing resources where they should not provide resources to, in, to them. They are trying to solve the security problem. So they are one way or the other still empowering the, the, either the bandits or, or, or the, the aggressors. You see, it's just about one governor is uh, using the carrot approach. Another governor is using the stick approach. approach. A state of emergency will make us to have a unified policy. So it means that we're talking about, you know, a situation where government make a pronouncement and the pronouncement will contain the direction of how we want to address this, which all members, you know, of the political elites and the gov government must adhere to. It simply means that certain actions will be taken without recourse to court. It means that the, 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 the military can, you know, the people arrested, they can declare them enemy combatants. But, but the, just, key, the key issue now is, just as the governor said, where is the manpower? Exactly. So, so, so a state of emergency in itself cannot solve this problem. It's, it's one of the processes that we need to put in place. But it will only make sense if, in, I mean, side by side with it, there is mm. appropriation Talking about two, 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 two billion dollars compared to Egypt's ten billion, and Egypt is not fighting against itself. No, Egypt it's not. is looking no. at external aggressors no. that they've not even gone to war with mm. in the last it's, 10, 15 exactly. years. But yet, every year, you know, they are increasing. So we need to talk about moving, you know, um, increasing our, our, our military spending. However, we should put our food where our mouth is. It's not about you looking for one fanciful APC, one fanciful equipment, talking to U.S. about Tucano. You know, that's why it is easy for U.K. to say, no, no, Nigerian problem is complex. Yeah, because what we're making things that are supposed to be very simple, we're making it to become very, very complex. What is so complex in you looking at this issue and say, you know what, we need to increase manpower. Manpower, manpower, manpower is major solution. Manpower is about 80% solution. It comes with its own challenges, challenges of, okay, recruitment. Yeah, Nigerians you know, are ready to join. And all of that. Oh my, Nigerians <laughs> are ready to join the armed forces. Yes. Lots of Nigerian youth are no, unemployed. No, no doubt, no doubt. They're unemployed, they're looking no for jobs. They'll, uh, they'll, if you look they'll at be what is more going than on willing. The, if you look at what is going on in the, the Northeast now with, with the civilian JTM, it, it gives you a clear idea they'll that They'll be more than willing. willing. Look at how many people volunteer to, to And to, we to, have so many to, of to, them fit for service. Fit for service, 43 million plus. Yeah, every year we're turning in over 3,000 people that are ready into military service. That's what the civilian, I mean, the statistics is showing. Compared to Egypt's 1.5 million, that is 3.4 million. That Nigeria, we are turning out 3.4 million every year. Able-bodied men that have reached military age. This is something, you know, important for us to actually consider. And, and this also brings us to the issue of the NYC. Mm. You know, this is something I've been saying over 10 years ago that, you know, 
the purpose of us setting up the NYC, you know, situations has, uh, have changed and we need to re actually redefine it. The purpose then was for a a integration of all the ethnic nationalities as a result of the, I mean, fallout of the Nigerian Civil War. Civil War. Now, the, the issue we have now, we see that, yes, it was a good, um, good initiative, but we need that initiative now to, to, to we, you know, we need to increase the benefits you know, review that initiative and then try to add more gains to it. Right now is a time when the National Assembly should be looking at turning NYC into a compulsory military service. Changing the objective of that program, mm. it will still not remove them from posting them to, you know, schools to teach. But out of the one year, or whether they're going to increase this to, you know, 18 months, should include six months of compulsory real military training, leadership, and warfare. Mm. Just the same way Israel are doing. This allows us to be able to have reservists, enough manpower that are already trained. We don't if have If I've been doing this in the last 10 years, what we need to do now is to just call all the people we've trained in the last 10 years. Look at one that are still physically fit and do just one more crash program for them. And then you put them, give them weapon, give them uniform, and then put them where, where we actually need them. The, the approach for us to solve this problem is move the military in all those ungoverned spaces. And that's where we're having issues. Yes. As long as we still have those areas, those people will still be living there and they will still be carrying out havoc. By the time you spot them here, before you send the intelligence to the, I mean, to, to the uh, ops, op, op, operation of the knock center, and by the time they scramble, they've already moved there to somewhere else. Exactly. So you see yourself eating, you know, you know the, 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 the wrong target. So the issue is this. Move the military there. Military clear all these areas. Then as the military are moving out, the police are moving in. So this means that you also have to increase the strength of the Nigerian police. And you're very correct. What we see in the Northeast most times is that the military goes and liberates a community and then it moves on. The police doesn't go in. So That's why what we're seeing now you know, the bandits are us building super the cops. Are bad. See, if you look at the pre-2015 election, the approach towards, you know, uh, addressing the uh, insurgents at that time was they took the war to the insurgents. They move and they were pushing them, pushing them. That was when they were cleaning I mean, all the territories. But what we see right now, because our people are already battle weary, they are tired, they are weak. We've been seeing symptoms of uh, PTSD. And you know, yes, soldiers committing because, suicide. Because I mean, these soldiers have been there now. for ages. So what are we doing right now is we are building super camp. Look at Gaydam. Gaydam, the military facility there is fortified. Boko Haram could not penetrate. It's still intact, and and these people are in Gaydam. The military remain in the, their fortification. The same with the police, well fortified there. And as long as we, you know, and there are reasons why they are doing that. And the reason why they are doing that is the reason why we need to change the strategy. Because they are forced to take that particular position because of the realities on ground. And until, and if you continue like this, these people will continue to be emboldened and they will continue to carry out hmm. or, you know, uh, execute more havoc. On, 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 on the Nigerian, uh, Nigerian people and our psyche. Because until you begin to take the war back to them and be clear them, look at what Idris Debbie did. And what, that's what, the, the, you know, what he tried to register in, in those people's head. If you hit me, I'm taking the war straight to you. To you. And I'm going, to, I'm going to hit you and hit you and hit you until I see that you can no longer walk. And it, we all saw it, if you've not seen the one he has done before. We saw the one he did last to Abubakar Shekau. Yes, he true. hit him so hard that Shekau had to come out and start sending audio tapes around, crying, mm. cursing, you know, using Allah to curse uh, God, to curse uh, Idris Debbie. For, you know, until we get to a level where uh, Shekau will start crying and then start cursing at, I mean, uh, at Ayuru for what he has done. And I believe that, you know, the, the chief of army staff can get this thing done. And he has capable commanders under his command. What we need is for us to be able to agree as a nation and say, you know what, let's forget about all this fanciful, you know, high-tech equipment. What we need is enough manpower with serviceable AK-47, enough ammunition, good uniform, good accountrymen that follow uh, with them with bulletproof vests, good bulletproof helmets, and then 
enough logistical supply in terms of you know diesel, mm. petrol for their vehicle, food uh, and water, medicals, uh, communications. And um, with all this, it requires planning, and that, that's where you know uh, we talk about also about uh, uh, the, the the budget because budget is not only into paying allowance. Yes, exactly. it also includes you know making provision for mm -hmm. all these things to ensure that you know they continue to have constant supply. And once we have all this, they don't need a super to Kano to take care of these people. I understand your point. Thank you very much, uh, Sheya Detail, for coming on the program. Let's just hope something is done. The truth is that with just uh, 120,000 active personnel, even if there were 200 or even 300, that would still not be enough to uh, cover a country that is almost 108, 1, 1 million square kilometer and with a population of 200, over 200 million. So if there's any emergency at all that we need to declare, the emergency should be to speed up recruitment into the military. I don't know how that will be done. Of course, it's not going to be easy at all. I mean, you have to think about the corresponding cost. I mean, you have to pay salaries and, and all of that. So it's, it's, it's quite tough, but then um, it, it's, it's tough, no doubt, but it's a tough decision that this country must take. All these ideas of shouting, oh, the security men are not there when people attacked or when the bandits come, you don't have security personnel. I mean, we all understand it. The fact is that we don't have enough security personnel to go around. So, and uh, if we do not address this, we'll just be beating around the bush. All right, we'll take a quick break now. And when we come back, we'll be hearing from a former police commissioner. He'll be discussing the issue of policing in the country at this very difficult time. Stay with us. Opinions are free. Facts are sacred. The truth is universal. How, in practical terms, can we, for instance, de-escalate the tension? President must see himself as the president of the Federal Republic. We know where the enemy is. Three places. Um, the Lake Chad region, the border area between Nigeria and Cameroon, and then the Sambisa forest. On DG360, we give you a complete dose of everything. Opinion, facts, and undiluted truths. I hardly believe what politicians say in this uh, part of the world. The new Nigeria is possible, the future is possible. We delve into the issues, dissect it so that you can understand it, use it to take action. I don't think there's any need for go any governor to look for grant for ranching. Digi360, dissecting the issues.